Hi, I wanted to share my project that I took on a couple of years ago with this uh, white MTD LT185 uh, lawn tractor. Uh, I was able to buy it very uh, reasonable because uh, the person that had it uh, that had apparently tried to have the tires changed. The person that tried to do that ended up pulling the axles out of the transmission because uh, I, don't, I guess they didn't know what they were doing. Um, so this is what I ended up with. Oops, we have a little problem here. I usually turn this gas um, line off when I get finished so I can uh, have no chance of flooding. Uh, so uh, I was able to repair the, uh, the transmission and axles. Uh, I was strongly advised not to tear into the transmission, but I had no choice. Uh, uh, the axles were falling out of it as I drove it, so I had to uh, get under there, pull it out. It wasn't easy. Uh, it, you know, I, my advice is to jack the thing up as high as you can if you try to do this. Um, and uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of linkages and screws that are hard to get to. But uh, in the end, it ended up, you know, I had to do it, so it was worth doing. Uh, what I ended up doing though was when I pulled it apart, uh, I learned how to uh, make the tractor into pause traction. That means both rear wheels drive at the same time, as you probably know. Um, I couldn't see any point in having a tractor with one wheel drive, and, and that would be the wheel that would slip, so that's kind of maddening. Uh, <clears throat> so I, uh, when I split it open, it turned out to be very simple. Uh, it was no big deal at all. Um, It was a pretty good, in very good shape. Um, and cleaning it out was nice to see uh, how you know you could clean it up where all the seals were good. Um, I sealed it back up again when I turned it into pause traction with uh, uh, some liquid metal. That's all. I didn't weld it. I didn't want to weld it. I didn't want to weld it because welding is so final. Um, uh, liquid metal, I thought possibly I could remove it if it didn't work out. So, uh, it's positive traction now with that much uh, traction and power. I put wheel weights on the back, which is just some barbells drilled out that fit into the wheel well very nicely. And you can see my chains on the back. Uh, I found a, a, a plow for it which is uh, actually for a John Deere, but easily adapted to it. And if you can see underneath here where I uh, made these blocks and a sling to go between them, mounted it on the frame so that the uh, a normal lifting device for the mower lifts that plow. Now, it doesn't lift it very far. and You might have to experiment to uh, get the plow the right height. You don't want it to go too low when you're driving. You don't want it to go too high. Uh, the other thing I did with the plow was... You see these linkages here. They used to be springs. You see the missing screw down there. I'll have to replace that. That snapped off. I just flattened out some tubing and replaced the springs with that because the plow didn't have any strength. Every time I hit something, it, the springs would give and it would fall forward. And this plow I use for landscaping even. This is a strong little plow. <coughs> uh, the uh, gas tank in this is above... Oops. above the uh, the motor, above the engine, above the carburetors. So it has a certain amount of gravity feed. So uh, it does have a fuel pump, but it uh, can al it also has a shutoff valve in the carburetors. But if anything goes wrong, gravity feed will cause the, um, the gas to feed down overnight probably into your carburetors, flood your carburetors, and possibly go into your crankcase, and, and then you have big problems. So, uh, I, my solution to that was, and I had, I checked the, uh, the, in the bowl of the carburetor, I checked the solenoid valves, and they work, but apparently once in a while they didn't, and allowed fuel to leak through. So, my solution was to put this little uh, shutoff valve, manual shutoff valve, in uh, the fuel line, 
assimilate to something you'd used to see in uh, uh, motorcycles. You know, you shut off the fuel because the tank in a motorcycle is above the motor, above the carburetors. So you want to be able to shut off the fuel to be sure. So that I did. You see next to it, I also changed, see that elbow right there uh, in the middle of the screen? Um, that was the, that is a few, uh, oil drain for the engine. They used to have some kind of weird thing on there that was impossible to get to and would only drain all over the frame. So I extended that out and put a nice uh, angle on there, right angle. I pull a plug out of that and drain that right down into a, uh, my drain pan. Much better than the setup that was there before. Oh, gosh, let's see here. Uh, the other thing on this tractor is that um, the battery battery on this it has pretty good compression in the engine and it didn't really want to turn the engine over so I looked into it and found that uh, for anything over 18 horse you probably want to have a higher cranking amp battery now this cranking amps are 350 I think the normal ones are about 180 or 185 or something for uh, lawn tractors so you really want to put in the long the bigger battery the better battery although it was quite expensive if the tractor wasn't going to run without it so, this turned into a real beast of a tractor for me, as tiny as it is. Uh, she will do a lot of work. Um, yeah, uh, last thing would be that um, the lights on it, of course, were destroyed and they were useless anyways. They're so weak. Uh, I found these nice little aluminum uh, casing lights on... Um, on online their LED lights two lights on this will light up your whole yard this is really strong strong lights so they're a great thing to have and after replacing the switches and lines and putting some plugs on them so I could take the toweling off when I needed to they turned out to be a real blessing uh, all four tires uh, after a while of course they are tubeless to begin with but they never last. Uh, they, they get um, dried out. Uh, so I went out and I just put tubes in all four of them. Or bought tubes for all four. And as they went flat, replaced them. So now the tires are all good. Uh, so this thing is working out really well for me. Uh, it'll pull a lot of weight. I have a trailer hitch on the back. Right above the, uh, the mount for the plow. Right there. And this little, uh, this little girl will do some work for you. Um, I even plow snow with it around the door yard here. Um, I, it won't plow deep snow, obviously, but, you know, uh, rather than shovel around the house, this will just push it right out of the way. And in the summer, I use it for landscaping. Uh, you just got to make several passes, and you'll push a lot of dirt with this thing. As you can see, as you can tell, the part of the plow here is bent because this thing is so powerful, it will actually bend the plow which I'll be able to straighten easily, but uh, that's how it goes. The only problem I've had with this is the steering. Um, if you see this steering linkage here, is uh, that's just a screw through there now. It's not the right part, but uh, there's so much force on that sometimes that um, it snaps that screw off. So I've drilled it out and gone from a quarter inch fitting up to a 5 16 and we'll see how that works out now. Other than that, on this beautiful rainy day, um, maybe I can get some video of this thing in action pretty soon. Uh, I didn't do it in the snow. Uh, it's bad enough having to be outside in the winter plowing on this in the snow. But uh, maybe I can get some of it uh, doing some landscaping uh, this spring and summer. Okay, uh, if this video helps you out, inspires you in any way, uh, please like it. It would help me a lot. Thank you.